Welcome ladies and gentlemen to my new video where we're doing the 1000 subscriber special. We are going to be going over how to build into different types of lanes, different archetypes. I'm going to cover how to deal with assassins, deal with high, high threat control mages, low threat control mages, how to go against tanks, how to go against enchanters, and how you should adjust your build for the game state because I think this is just a absolutely invaluable skill that can increase your overall MMR and increase your overall rank and is a great skill to have when you are playing um, Swain. If you guys have any questions for him, make sure to hit me up in the comments down below. I try to be as interactive as possible with you guys. And if you have a particular game state that you see commonly, maybe you're like, oh, I have a team that's super, super low damage and I have a bunch of enemy assassins. How should I build in this game state? I'd be happy to help you out um, with those in particular. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into the first example and how you should build into it. All right, and getting into the first archetype, we are going to be talking about assassins. Now, conquer versus electrocute. It really is dependent on the enemy team comp and how these skirmishes are going to be played out. You have to think about in your head how long will it take for it to be decided. If the enemy team has a Leona and a Sejuani, for example, Conqueror definitely will be able to outperform because you'll be able to stack it up, get a lot of extra damage over a couple of rotations, and it really will um, help you a bit with healing as well. So that is when Con you should be picking Conquer. However, if the enemy team combat has something like a Pike in it, in the support role, it has a Kha'Zix in the assassin role, a lot of champions with low sustain and very is are, are very squishy. This is when you should be picking Electrocute in these particular matchups. You shouldn't only be doing runes based on your lane you should be taking the whole game into effect when you are playing swain now whenever i'm playing against assassins i like going the resolve tree unless i am extremely extremely practiced in the lane that is when i like to push more aggressive secondary runes so the most important line is the bone plating conditioning and second win line so Bone plating is great against assassins that need to hard commit in the fight to proc your bone plating. Something like a fizz comes to mind where if they want to get your bone plating off, they are going to have to um, get into range of being autoed a bunch, getting hit by your E and your W and your max um, damage Q. That is when bone plating will shine. However, if you're against something like a Zed, second wind is going to be better because they can just poke off, continuously poke off your bone plating with just a single Q, and they do not have to commit into your E range to um, take off your bone plating. So that should be another adjustment. Starting items are super important. If you are comfortable in the lane, going a Doran's Ring or a Tear is going to be the best way to go. If you are really uncomfortable and need a bit of a crutch, or the enemies at your elo are on average as good as or better than you, Doran Shield is going to be a great way to sustain into the lane and get to level 6 where you can um, really start punishing the enemies and really where a big power spike is um, with Swain as far as just getting a regular item set up. So if the enemy team and your earth Okay, so mythic items can be really, really difficult if the enemy team has a lot of HP stacking champions, something like a um, Sejuani out of the jungle, they have a uh, Leona, they have a um, Aurelia, they have a Ezreal that even builds a bit of HP, Leandris is definitely going to outperform. However, if your team has a lot of damage, you have a Vayne on your team and you have ADCs that are doing well, maybe your other lanes are doing well, Itemizing into an Everfrost can be very effective because you are going to be playing off your allies and going utility can be helpful. So you have to make a lot of adjustments on the fly and the different things that you should be looking for is are your teams doing well? If they are not doing well, you need to go a heavy carry item. You need to go Ludens or Leandres to carry the game if none of your lanes are winning. If your lanes are winning, you're doing well and you really want to look um, to be utility, Everfrost will outperform. High impact spells that turn team fights, things like Fizzle and Zedal, Zonia's is an absolute must. A very, very heavy enemy dive comp, Rylize is going to be a great item. So you have to be thinking about the skirmishes and team fights, what is going to be the most effective item in those situations. That is how you're going to be able to build Swain. Now, it is a huge strength of Swain to not have a super um, 
uh, just a meta meta build that you should be building every single time um, because he can be flexible towards the team comp. He isn't something like a Jax that absolutely needs to grab a Triforce or a Divine Sunder and needs to go into a particular um, build path and isn't as flexible as Swain. So use this strength. If you have any questions about this, let me know. I can't go over every single item in its um, usefulness, at least in this video. We are just talking about the different runes and what you should be looking at in the different archetypes. That will wrap up my ideas and what you should be looking for in the assassin archetype. All right, and getting into the bruiser archetype and how you should look to build, what runes you should be looking to use when you are playing against it now. Bruisers can be as difficult or even more difficult than assassins because of their sustain and tankiness. However, when you are playing against bruisers, in general, Conquer is going to be the best keystone that you can be doing because the fights are going to last relatively longer than most other um, matchups, maybe versus a... Um, assassin or mage usually the play style of most bruisers is to take a consistently long trade that is where they are going to have a lot of power and we need to use conqueror to adjust for these play styles going electrocute against a bruiser particularly something like an Aurelia, Aurelia or a darius that have a ability to sustain quite regularly in team fights your electrocute will just get out healed and you will just really be lacking damage so getting conquer in these matchups are going to be is going to be very very important now the very nice thing about bruisers is a lot of them do not spike super hard on one item or at a very low level um, so you can get away with things like conditioning you can get away with things like a dorm's ring if you are comfortable in the matchup um, this is it's so so subjective in what you should be building against bruisers now again Leandres is probably going to be the best performing champion because if you look at the bruiser items they do not provide resistances but most of them provide a decent amount of hp so being able to counter hp with percentage hp damage is going to be a must Leandres is going to be great the only way that you would want to look to adjust is say you have a bot lane that's 2 and 0 3 and 0 and you just want to look to be a peel bot this is when you can be going Everfrost. This is going to be a defensive setup where when you get committed on, maybe an Aurelia lands an E or you get into Darius's E range and he grips you, being able to escape Everfrost is going to be great. Now, the movement speed delta is extremely important in these matchups against Bruisers, so rushing boots early is going to be rather important. Essentially, when you are playing against Bruisers, in my opinion, Swain is going to outperform most of the time in team fights, but they are going to win most of the 1v1s if both people are playing to the same level in the matchup. Again, so we adjust for how scary the lane is. If they are able to poke off a bone plating really easily without hard committing, you should be going second wind unless they are low threat until after 12 minutes. That's when you can go conditioning into them. And if they have a lot of CC, tenacity and unflinching can be very helpful. Using things, using combat summoners, particularly in solo lanes against these bruisers is a must in my opinion. Going teleport is only for people that are very comfortable in the lane and know that they don't need a combat summoner to um, survive in those different matchups. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. Rylai's is insanely effective against melee heavy enemy team comps. I sometimes rush a tier into an HP item into bruisers like a um, Riven or a Aurelia where I want the early build path of grabbing a giant's belt to prevent their level six all in of just being able to one shot me and then using the tier of the goddess as a bandage in those very particular situations. So let me know if you have any questions. Bruiser matchups can be very, very rough. In my opinion, stay away from electrocute. Um, use combat summoners and try and put as in, in as many games as you can. Um, because it is becomes very surprising what lanes are going to be easy and what are going to be hard. At first, I thought set was going to be an absolutely terrible matchup because of this percentage HP damage, but I was able to adjust my builds for different things. One caveat with this is I actually, the only time I like Grasp is when I am playing against a Gangplank because he takes very, he has a very unique trade pattern in which he does a quick Q on you and then backs off. This is when being able to spike damage really quickly on someone like with a grasp and then being able to have the resolve tree can 
be effective. So in my opinion, try out the grass build into Gangplank. If you want a full gameplay video on grass versus Gangplank, I have that in the gameplay playlist. Um, so check that out if you want to know how to beat up on Gangplanks in the top lane uh, with Swain. So that will wrap up the Bruiser archetype. All right, and getting into the next archetype, my absolute favorite one to play against, and that is the low threat enemy control mage. These things, this would include something like a twisted fate. This would include something like a Vladimir. Things that need a while to scale. Something like a Corky that needs a lot of time to scale and how you can look to take advantage of the lane. So what I do is I try to put as much scaling into my runes as possible. You can go conditioning if you want to take resolve secondary that can be very, very effective with revitalize. You can take things like gathering storm and transcendence. You can go start with a tier, which feels very, very nice in solo lane where you can spam out a bunch of Qs. You can go a Dorn's ring. You're not forced into a Dorn shield start like you will be against some bruisers and assassins. You are able to run combat summoners like ghosts that are going to outscale both ignite and even teleport in particular situations and really start to look to set yourself up to carry those mid-game team fights obviously when you're playing against a low threat enemy mage and you want to build a carry build leandri's zonia's is really the two item spike that can really do some disgusting things and you can really look to carry games quite heavily you should be focusing on cs as much as possible particularly against safe enemy control mages and really looking to become a mid-game monster where swaying can be just so hyper successful in carrying games around objectives with a status effect his ultimate and percentage burn damage with leandries these should be your absolute favorite lanes and then when you combine it with an enemy jungler that's low damage say if you're against something like a twisted fate and a sejuani going tenacity unflinching and then just drain tanking in a 2v or 1v2 situation you're going to get kills all of the time in these um, particular situations. So get used to these. These are the games that you are supposed to carry. I do not want to see you guys using Glacial Augment and Everfrost and utility builds into lanes where you can look to maximize. You should be getting a crap ton of CS. You should be um, doing heavy, heavy carry builds and really punishing the enemies for playing these lower threat champions into Swain that you really need to, in my opinion, you really need to punish Swain early before he can get his scale going. So when you see a low threat enemy control mage locked into your lane, this is when you should be definitely locking in Swain to um, carry games. And that will wrap up my section on a low threat enemy control mages. All right, and getting into some higher threat control mages that you might see. This could include things like Syndra. This could include things like Anivia that have a lot of all-in pressure that can kill you pretty easily. Now, the biggest caveat that I do change a little bit in these matchups is I do not go conquer or electrocute when I have a ganking jungler, maybe something like a Nunu or something like a Xin Zhao that's going to throw out a lot of early game, highly effective ganks. This is when I go Glacial Augment into enemy high threat control mages that are immobile glacial augment is a great adaptation particularly if you know you're gonna it's gonna be very unlikely that you're gonna be able to kill them in a 1v1 situation unless you're able to chase them down on top of the glacial slow with your ultimate and really pump out a decent amount of consistent damage so look for glacial augment in those very particular um, matchups it's a really effective against zoe so again you're looking for control mages that you are unable to kill easily in a 1v1 that are immobile. That means they are not, they don't have a dash. They don't have like a fizz E. They don't have a way to escape your E extremely easily. Glacial Augment can be a great setup. Now, again, you need to look at what their trading pattern is. Can they proc your uh, bone pointing easily if they can proc your, proc your bone pointing easily second wind is going to be better if they do not have high threat on you until post 12 minutes maybe they need um, some spell pen or a couple of items to kill you in a 1v1 conditioning is going to be better if they are just something like a syndra that's going to just throw a q at you throw a q at you throw a q at you and just poke you out um, second wind is going to be very very effective and again we are looking at the game as a whole to decide whether conquer or electrocute is going to be better glacial augment again another adapt or another thing that needs to be uh 
what would you call that a requirement that needs to be in the game is you need to have high damage allied threat you need to have something like a vein you need to have some damage coming out of the jungle the last thing you would want to do is go glacial augment when you have a low damage jungler maybe something like a uh, sejuani or a zac you have a support that's something like a leona or a rel and then you have a malphite in the top one you need to go a damage rune if you're playing mid lane swain and you have a bunch of low damage allies so <laughs> these are a couple of requirements that you need for all of these different things i know i'm kind of scattergunning and shotgunning a lot of information at you guys but i think that it's um, pretty easy uh, to understand if you just get used to all of these different play styles. A lot of this stuff is just going to come naturally. When you're playing against a high threat control mage, rushing early merc trades is a very, very good way of just denying the enemy. Um, deny the enemy's ability to quickly kill you and um, getting the early uh, no magic mantle and getting the early merc trades pre-6 can really bandage your poor late early game. Poor early game pre six um so if you are against a control mage that has a lot of upfront burst that they and they have to commit on you hard crown of the shattered queen is going to be very effective however crown is a very very tr tricky item to know when to use because you cannot go crown against say if the enemy has an ash or a misfortune that they have a long range abilities that can take your crown passive off very easily this is a insanely situational item that you can only use in particular spots now um, one caveat would be if you are against an enemy evelyn crown in my opinion is a absolute must to prevent them from just picking and one-shotting you inside of acc i think it, evelyn is just a disgusting champion that first of all kills you from stealth second of all kills you in cc third has a magic shred so you can't really build tank items don't really help i mean they can still one shot most tanks and then they have a execute with a invulnerability frame it's just literally everything you want in an assassin that is just a makes for a absolutely disgusting kit so back to high threat enemy control mages going things like early merc trades is very effective going things like everfrost if you have a lot of damage coming out of your team can be effective going into a maybe a zonia's rush if they have a high damage um ability that you can um just really uh, deny a all-in combo something like um maybe a cindra throwing out her r or a vlad that's doing really well csing really well going into an early zonias and stopping his ult all-in combo can be very very effective so these are my tips uh for the high threat enemy control mages usually you want to go resolve secondary if you're like me um doran shield is going to be effective to kind of bridge you to level six it's all about getting getting to level six on equal resources that is usually when you're able to beat out these um control mages in certain um ability window cooldowns when you get the enemy to miss a high value spell maybe their big stun spell or their big damage spell and then you land an e on them and burst or, and then get them down with your demonic incense ascension and that will wrap up my tips for the high threat enemy control mages all right and getting into a rather tough matchup and tough archetype to go up against and that is the mid-range battle mages that really look for longer consistent trades essentially what you look to do as swain so examples of this would be something like a cassiopeia or something like a rise that looks to throw out a crap ton of spells on you while maintaining kind of shorter range now resolve secondary is going to be better because these are tough matchups and you really want to get to level six the battle mages have a unique ability pre six to chase you down with spells so for example with cassiopeia landing a q spamming ease on you and for rise getting a bunch of q spells to hit you um pre-6 when you don't really have too many levels and your cooldown is still pretty long on your death's hand before you get levels and pretty much reduce it down to 33% of its original cooldown. Having a 9 second um, spammable spell, um, you it takes you a while uh, longer to scale than some of the other um, battle mages that you might experience. So resolve secondary is important. Going conquer is going to be important because usually when you are against these kind of um, matchups is the team fights are going to go a little bit longer. You're not going against an assassin. You're going against something that's looking to deal out a lot of consistent damage. It's basically the bruiser of the mage class that is looking to just do a lot of strong consistent damage and that is when conquer is going to outperform. 
if it is a particularly rough matchup, particularly something with dots like Cassiopeia, Doran Shield is going to outperform. Um, and going Leandre's Anguish when you are able is going to be great because a lot of these champions build HP items and they are going to be relatively tanky because whenever you're in the mid-range it means that you need to be able to take a bit of damage you are not a Velkaz, you're not a Zareth. those guys are sitting all the way in the back and just looking to do damage and being glass cannon so when you're up against these kind of champions conquer leandris and hopefully living until you can get your cooldown lower on your queue and be able to fight with them in that mid-range um, kind of stuff you are going to eat a lot of damage so just getting used to playing a defensive play style until you get your item spikes your power spikes your um, level power spikes and your item power spikes you will uh <laughs> oh god this isn't coming out right but you <laughs> essentially you need to survive until level six and then you need to um, really punish the enemy in their uh, cooldown windows when they use their big abilities. For example, Cassiopeia's Miasma, or if they use their root on the rise, that is when the, you can chase them down the lane and really look to punish some of these uh, battle mages that are essentially looking to do um, what you do as well. And that will wrap up this uh, archetype for Swain. All right, and if you somehow luck out and go into a enchanter or a tank as Swain, there are two different ways you can look to approach it. First of all, these two archetypes are very easy for you to kill and burst out if you're trying to snowball in the early game. If you are in a very aggressive Swain player, you can go Electrocute. However, I like to punish them with scaling. So I always go conditioning into these low threat enemy lanes where I can get a huge amount of tankiness later into the game. I sometimes go overgrowth if I'm going a heavy HP build. An example of a heavy HP build, let's give one just right now. Let's just add a bunch of gold. So a heavy HP build would be something like this. Um, probably go Azonias, Rylai's. We get some boots, and then we probably finish that off with either a Rabadons or, um, depending on if I'm looking to be in the sidelines to push, maybe something like an Archangels. So a very heavy HP build is going to work well with Overgrowth. If you're looking for a hyperscaling build, this actually turns out to be pretty pretty disgusting even in the late game without Leandres but again it's going to have a lot of extra um, HP and make you uh, quite tanky so again you can either choose to attack the enchanter tank lane or you can choose to scale against it now if you're looking to scale against it it's important that you have a very very high CS number you need to take advantage of the fact that they are not going to be able to pressure you too much they're not going to be able to pressure you off CS even pre-6 when Swain is particularly weak you should be having at least a 7 CS uh, a minute if you are able um, to pull off that number uh, I've been struggling recently a bit with CS and Swain uh, I just need to get better at it and getting get more used to the auto attack animation just because I'm traditionally mostly a support Swain player but this season I'm really transitioning to um, the mid lane again so try and punish the lane by either hyperscaling or looking to be very very aggressive and looking for kills with electrocute particularly if you're in an elo that you feel like you're better on a on a um you're okay if you're better than the average player in that mmr you can look to punish them heavily with the electrocute play style and just rushing straight into leandries and really looking to take over the early and mid game and that will wrap up this one we have one more archetype and that is the adc all right and getting into the final archetype now if you're playing mid or top lane and you're going into an adc it is going to be rough um, they are going to have a lot of power. They're going to have access to a lot of resources because it's very easy for ADCs to CS, particularly in a solo lane. And they have a lot of very strong, consistent damage. Thinking about action, I'm thinking about um, Tristana and Lucian. They are going to be able to out-trade you on a long-term um, trade particularly when you are pre-6 so against these champions they are squishy you want to take quick trades when your abilities are up and then back off until your abilities are back up because they will out damage you on a consistent level going electrocute is pretty important now if they are a pokey ADC, like something like an Ezreal second wind is going to be better. If they are going to be something that can hard commit into you, something like a Tristana bone pointing is going to be a lot better. But however, I do recommend going things like Doran's shield into these champions and really trying to um, 
cushion and give yourself as much of a crutch until level six when you can start beating them on the consistent damage level with your ultimate all in because of your bit of tankiness that they are not going to have i find exhaust is insanely effective against these champions you should be running that so again electrocute um we want to go domination primary we want to go resolve secondary and really look to do that now if your team has a lot of damage you can always look for the glacial augment change up where you can really just set up ganks to a insane degree particularly if you have high damage but kind of low cc jungler going glacial augment can really just increase even further the amount of um uh, utility that you can give your jungler on the gank is going to be effective. So for an example, something like a Lee Sin, a Kindred, or a Rek'Sai, giving them more of an ability to chase people down the lane with a continuous slow that is applied, Glacial Augment can be very effective to punish those lanes that are rather squishy. Now if you're just in the bot lane, I think that Electrocute is probably going to be the best rune that you're going to run. Um, because you're going to be a little bit under leveled, uh, being a support or an ADC, you might not get as much time to ramp up with Conqueror as you would from a solo lane where you're a higher level and you have access to uh, more resources. So just keeping that in mind when you play Support Swain, usually Electrocute is the best. And when you're playing as ADCs, Electrocute is the best just because they're squishy and you do not want to take longer consistent trades with them pre-6 and sometimes even post-6 like something like a vein uh there's no way you're going to beat it on a consistent level uh with damage just because it can just output 10 times more damage than you while being stealth while getting a two second or three second whatever it is um mobility spell to dodge out your E's and Q's. And that will wrap up my video, guys. If you have any questions about particular matchups, let me know in the comments. I will give you a write-up. Um, thank you again so much for uh, passing the threshold of a 1,000 subscribers. It's really awesome. Um, yeah, and as always, guys, take it easy.